What's up folks, this is the last part, the part 17, of what if Deku become a healer hero. Chapter 43. Consciousness comes and goes in waves, is Yuku's brain struggling to shed off the remains of sleep rather than being lured back in. His lungs expand as he inhales deeply, then something tickles his nose and he abruptly sneezes. Hiss. Sharp needles dig into his chest and he grimaces, blarily opening his eyes. Two pale yellow orbs glare down at him, mere inches away from his face, ah! He yells, throwing up his arms, then wincing when his throat protests. Sushi, he rasps, pushing his cat off his chest, what are you doing? Get off, you jerk. Sushi moves off his chest, only to jump right on his lap a moment later. He meows loudly, staring directly at his yuku. The freckled boy sighs exasperatedly trying to rub the sleep out of his eyes. Sunlight streams through his window, illuminating the edge of his bed and making him squint. Huh, that's new. He blinks in confusion, wondering why it's so unusually bright in his room. Wait a minute. Panic surging through his veins, as Yuku scrambles to grab his phone off his nightstand. 8.22 AM, crap. He overslept. He overslept completely incapable of processing anything beyond fuck. And I need to get to class, as Yuku, flings his covers and his cat off of him and tumbles off of his bed. Practically tearing off his pajamas, he throws on his uniform before grabbing his bag and racing out of his room, completely foregoing brushing his hair or teeth. There's no time for breakfast either, he just runs straight out of the dorm building and bolts towards the main campus. He's completely missed his morning lesson with, recovery girl he'll have to apologize to her profusely later but he can still make it to the last bit of homeroom if he's fast enough. Pouring on speed, he tears down the hallway and skids to a halt in front of his classroom, yanking the door open. Twenty pairs of eyes land on him and his stomach plummets to his feet fuck white yank the door open like that Madraya kun, Aizawa says in his, usual dry tone, glad you could join us is Yuku sweat drops. I'm so sorry, sensei. He immediately blurts out an apology, I didn't mean to oversleep, I, I don't know what happened, I'm a dry yukun, Aizawa repeats and is Yuku's jaw snaps shut. It's fine. Go to your seat. Bewildered, all is Yuku can manage to get out in response is, huh? His classmates are watching him with various expressions of, amusement. We let you sleep in. Agakure says. You worked hard yesterday, so Aizawa sensei said it was okay, Yerazu tells him. Lucky, Kaminari grumbles. Is Yuku's brain can't quite process their words. He blinks in confusion. Eh? Are you going to keep standing there, or are you going to go to your seat? Aizawa asks with a hint of impatience in his bored tone. I'd appreciate it if I could get on with class. Startling. Is Yuku quickly scampers over to his desk. Kakin's eyes follow him the entire time, but he says nothing. As Aizawa continues talking about whatever he was going on about before as Yuku interrupted, the freckled boy sits down in his seat, breathing heavily from his run. His hand is still clutched around the rumpled tie that he didn't have time to put on before he left and he struggles to loop it around his wrinkled collar now. Shinsa snickers quietly behind him. He's honestly, genuinely shocked that he overslept and that he slept through his alarm too. He didn't think he was that tired from healing Tensai last night, it's not like he drained himself to quirk exhaustion or anything. He also definitely recalls having one of his usual nightmares, but he, must have fallen right back asleep after he woke up. Maybe his lack of sleep recently finally caught up to him. It's, well, that's progress he supposes but he can't do it again. That was so embarrassing. He subtly tries to comb his bedhead with his fingers throughout the beginning of first period, although from the way Sero shoots him a sideways grin, he's not subtle enough. His stomach also makes its displeasure at missing breakfast very clear and growls incessantly during present mixed lecture. By the time lunchtime finally arrives, he's ravenous. Kirishima chuckles at him as he shovels food into his mouth at their usual table. Slow down, man. He says, 
you're gonna start choking if you keep that up, and I think Totoraki kun would probably kill me if I have to give you mouth to mouth, Izuku nearly then chokes on his food, but manages to force it down his throat at the last second. Coughing into his elbow, he glares lightly at Kirishima, who merely laughs. Beside Izuku, Totoraki slurps his soba in suspicious silence. Curling his lip, Kakan TSKS and scoffs, idiot. It's your own damn fault you're fucking starving. Why the fuck did you skip breakfast? You know your quirk makes, you hungry. I was in a rush, Izuku stresses, I freaked out as soon as I woke up and I just bolted out the door, I didn't have time to grab anything. I didn't even have time to put on my freaking tie. Kakan sniffs, yeah, it's a mess. As usual. Izuku sticks his tongue out at him. You slept well then, though? Totoraki asks gently. Izuku glances at him, then looks down at his food. Yeah, I, guess, he says, better than usual, I mean. You must have been very tired after healing Ingenium, Totoraki says. Yeah, you looked like you were dead on your feet when you came back last night, Kirishima adds. I'm surprised Aizawa sensei wasn't carrying you. Izuku flushes. I wasn't that tired, he says, then shakes his head, I mean, I was, but I wasn't tired enough to warrant oversleeping, he groans and covers his burning face with his hands. I can't believe Aizawa sensei let me off the hook so easily. I can't believe he actually allowed me to oversleep. I mean, you guys work hard all the time and he doesn't allow you to oversleep. He pauses, frowning. Huh. Wait, that's weird. Why did he let me sleep in? For some unknown reason, Kakan, Kirishima, and Totoraki all exchange, glances. Then, from the end of the table, Shinsu, who has been quiet up until now, suddenly coughs into his arm, favoritism. Izuku stares, wide-eyed. His ears turn pink. Eh? Kirishima purses his lips then nods decisively. Yup, that'd be it. Sounds about right, Kakan mutters nonchalantly. Mmm, Totoraki hums around his noodles. Izuku's eyes widen even further. Yeah, Zuku, this, isn't news. Kakan gives him an unimpressed look, as if this is some common knowledge that he should have already known. Izuku blanches. It takes his brain a few moments to reboot. Aza I'm sure Aizawa sensei doesn't play favorites. He gives a little nervous laugh. Kakan makes a sound that's a mix between a snort and an exasperated scoff. Meanwhile, Shinsu lets out an amused huff and, shakes his head, muttering, Oh, you sweet summer child. Louder, he says, of course, he plays favorites. All teachers do. If any teacher ever gives you an I don't play favorites spiel I guarantee you it's complete bull. What our purple comrade says is true, my friend, Kirishima says, throwing an arm over Izuku's shoulder, and lucky for you, you're practically every teacher's favorite, student. Izuku sputters, wh what? Why me? Kakin rolls his eyes skyward with a groan. Even Totoraki looks at him and says, Midraya kun Like it should be obvious. What? Kirishima grins tootily then turns as Yuku so that he's facing the rest of their friends sitting at their long combined lunch tables. Hey, everyone. Kirishima calls out. As Yuku feels a jolt of fear when their attention, instantly turns to him, but the redhead keeps him in place with his hands on his shoulders. Why is Madriyukun every teacher's favorite student? Cause he's a cutie. Ashida immediately calls out, waving her hand in the air. As Yuku turns bright red, because he is a diligent and hard worker, Ida supplies helpfully. Because he's the only one of us that's not a constant pain in their asses, Saro says good-naturedly. Ooh, yeah, that's a good point, your Araka agrees, he doesn't cause a lot of trouble and he helps deal with us when we get hurt. Yes, I believe that having a healer on site during training, even an apprentice, takes a lot of pressure off of the teachers, Yerazu comments thoughtfully. He's so mature and confident in what he does, I think sometimes they see him more, as an aide rather than another student. Yeah, especially since he's so good at wrangling us, Kaminari says, 
not to mention how he's got the two strongest students in the class wrapped around his finger, so that's pretty dang helpful too. Izuku is internally screaming. Oh my god he is going to kill him the fuck is that supposed to mean? Kakan whips his head around to glare at the other, blonde. Totoraki, on the other hand, doesn't even deny it. He's also just super nice to everyone, including the teachers, Ashido says, pushing her hands on her cheeks, like, he's such a sweetheart, how could they not like him? He just wants to help everyone all the time. He's also got those Bambi eyes that they just can't say no to. Your Araka giggles at the deepening flush on his Yuku's face, yeah, I already said he's a cutie. Ashido says, that falls under that category. God, please end him. Yeah, but he's also a toughie, Sero adds, remember when he kicked All Might in the balls? Kaminari laughs, oh my god, that was legendary. I don't see how that would make him more likable to the teachers, Ida says hesitantly, a hint of disapproval in his tone. Cause he showed that, even though he's nice he's not one to mess around with. Sero says, grinning, and we know. We're all scared shitless of our healer. That's why he has us all by our balls. He snickers and the others burst into laughter while Lida sputters at the vulgarity. Sero Kun. Izuku squeaks, finally forcing his voice to work again. I oh my god, I don't even I don't even know what you're all talking about. Jesus Christ his face feels like a furnace. I I mean, I'm flattered. I guess that you all think that, but, I mean, I don't know you don't know if it's even true if they if I'm their favorite or whatever and even if I am, like, who even cares, it doesn't even matter right, it's just, I, uh, I it he dissolves into unintelligible stuttering as his brain rapidly short circuits. His friends gaze at him with shit eating, grins. Don't worry, Midraya kun Ashido's eyes twinkle with mirth. You're our favorite too. A half-strangled, choked noise escapes as Yuku's throat. What the fuck? What does that mean? How does he even respond? What is going on? With a stifled wail, as Yuku simply gives up and buries his face in his arms down on the table. Okay. Comes a muffled squeak. Totoraki pats his back placating me while his friends laugh around him. As Yuku groans. Recovery girl is thankfully very forgiving when he goes to the infirmary after school and apologizes profusely for missing his morning lesson. Azao apparently had given her a heads up on the situation, so it wasn't like she had been waiting for him to show up. Still, he vows to never do it again, but she waves him off and instead asks how he's feeling, and, in all honesty, he's actually feeling pretty great. Last night was probably one of the first full nights of sleep that he's gotten since Kamino and even though the bags under his eyes still haven't left and definitely won't leave for some time, he feels more arrested than he has in a long while. The energy that he used up yesterday has been rejuvenated and now that he's finished healing Tensai, and he's back in school, Izuku is now more eager than ever to heal All Might. He immediately jumps right back into training and his first two patients are practically gift-trapped and sent to him on a silver platter. It's a second-year hero student duo covered in multiple scrapes and bruises from a training session in the landslide zone of USJ gone wrong. A rather painful mishap for them, but an absolutely perfect opportunity for him. And there's even two of them. He, of course, still tells them what he's going to attempt to do just in case anything goes wrong since it is new territory for him, but they're both fine with it. Then he turns his attention to the first one, cleans her wounds, puts his hands on her, then stops his quirk. Here's where his new problem is. It's one thing to direct his energy between two injuries, but it's another when multiple injuries are involved. He can really only press down on the side of his hose that's closest to the bigger injury and that in turn helps create the smaller stream of energy. He isn't really sure if or how he can further guide that smaller stream to more specific injuries within the area it's already being directed towards, unsure of what else to do, he tries pressing down on one side anyway and eases up on the other side of the hose. The small stream automatically shoots out towards the nearest injury it can reach then quickly branches out to the next one, and the next one, 
until all the injuries within its vicinity are healed and it fades away. Huh. Izuku frowns in consideration. Was it just his imagination, or, did his energy seem to pause slightly in between jumping from injury to injury? Unblocking the other side of his hose, he quickly heals the rest of the girl's injury and moves on to the next patient. Giving him the same treatment, he presses down on one side, shoots off, and yes, yes, there it is. He almost didn't notice it at first, but there's definitely a bit of a time gap there. It must be, because the stream is so concentrated, the energy must not be able to spread out to other injuries as quickly as it normally can. Izuku's mind churns rapidly. Alright, alright, what can he do with this? He shouldn't bother trying to control the stream it's too quick and it'd be a waste of time. But, if it doesn't spread out to multiple injuries right away, if it has to sort of jump from one to, another, then maybe he can just stop this quirk right before it jumps. It didn't heal the wound completely before it continued spreading to the next one, so he'll have to keep turning his quirk off and on essentially, which would be a bit of a pain but it technically would get the job done without him healing the injuries that he doesn't want to heal. A thrill of excitement makes his heart, flutter. He could heal All Might this way. All he needs to do is get rid of his smaller injuries and then he can finally focus on regrowing his lung without anything to stop him and then and then he whirls around to face recovery girl. I know what to do. She blinks in surprise. Hastily finishing up with the patients and sending them away, Izuku closes the door behind them before excitedly, telling her of his discovery and his idea on how to heal All Might. This is it, recovery girl. He exclaims, I'm so close, I can do this I can even do it today. It wasn't hard at all. Whoa, whoa, okay, hold on, his mentor says, raising a hand, slow down a bit. He makes a desperate noise of impatience and she gives him a firm look. Midraya kun Easy. You healed a big injury yesterday, I, don't want you rushing to heal another big injury before you're ready. I'm not. I'm not. I feel fine, I he cuts himself off at her glare and shrinks. Swallowing, he says, I'm not going to completely heal him now, of course, just. Take care of his smaller injuries. Maybe not even all of them. Just some and I feel fine, really, I do. I know you think I'm just saying this cause I wanna rush, ahead, and yeah, I don't blame you for thinking that, but I do really feel fine. He looks at her earnestly. I slept like a rock. She huffs and shakes her head. For a long moment, she simply gazes at him with a tired, resigned expression. Then, she takes a deep breath and straightens up. You need to practice this more. Do it for the rest of the afternoon, and then, only if you feel confident. We'll have Tashin or I can come over. Yes. He fist pumps. Thank you. You're welcome. She gives him a warning look. If you're not careful, I'll put you on desk duty for a month. He smiles nervously. Right. He practically vibrates as he eagerly waits for their next patients to arrive. The following hour passes by both quickly and yet painfully slowly at the same time. Every time he succeeds, with his attempts at his strange new healing technique, he whips his head around to look at his mentor like an excited little puppy. Each triumph fills him with more and more confidence, and by the end of their lesson, he's practically glowing with happiness. Recovery girl steps outside to put the closed sign outside the infirmary, then re-enters and looks at him solemnly. Now, are you sure you, have enough energy to do this? You did just heal a lot of minor injuries and this is certainly something that can wait until tomorrow recovery girl, is Yuka whines. His mentor presses her lips together and turns away. Recovery girl, recovery girl, she mimics in a mocking voice as she walks back to her desk, how dare you look out for my well-being. Is Yuku lets out a sputtering bark of, laughter but the slight bitter edge to her tone has him walking over in to lean down and wrap his arms around her from the back. She pauses. Despite their close relationship, they don't actually hug that often, probably more due to their height difference than anything. I'll be careful, he promises, smiling softly. 
She reaches up to give his forearm a gentle squeeze. See that you are. After, she sends a quick text to All Might, they sit back and wait for the number one hero to arrive. Not two minutes later, there's a knock on the door. Young Madraya. Chio San, All Might greets as he enters in his normal form, how is everything? I heard you had a bit of a late start this morning, my boy. Is Yuku groans. Don't mention it. All Might chuckles, then says, and congratulations on, healing on Genium as well. I'm sure young Ida is thrilled to have his brother fully recovered once again. Is Yuku grins, eyes glittering with excitement. And now it's your turn. I've figured everything out, All Might. He takes a deep breath and beams up at him. This is it. All Might blinks slowly, his smile fading into something softer, more awe filled. Wow, he says, all right, this is. This, is it, my boy. Recovery girl leans back in her chair and chirps, well, technically it's still going to take more than one healing session, but yes, this is the beginning of it. Right, of course. All Might nods, then looks back at his Yuku. So, what shall I? Is Yuku gestures towards one of the beds nearby. Just sit here, please. And, I guess lift your shirt. All Might obediently makes his way over to the bed and sits down before lifting his shirt, revealing his scar once more. Is Yuku does a slightly better job at not wincing this time. Hopefully, it'll be gone when All Might leaves. Nobody talks as as Yuku walks up to his side and slowly raises his hands. Pausing, he glances over his shoulder at his mentor for approval. When she nods, he lets out a shaky breath and places his hands on All Might's ribcage. He's never slammed down so hard on his quirk before in his life. Once he's sure his energy won't leak out, he starts familiarizing himself with All Might's injuries again. Now that he's not so shocked at how many there are anymore, he can start to get a feel for their severity. Aside from the giant one on his ribcage, the majority of them are deep, under the surface injuries. Old scar tissue penetrating his muscles and ligaments or ghosts of fractures in his bones and joints. They're healed, of course, and that's not surprising after all, All Might has had plenty of healers use their quirks on him to try to bring him back to full health, one of those being Recovery Girl. They really are just old wounds, they're not as bad as the crippling injuries as Yuku felt all, throughout all for one. But as Yuku can imagine, that they're very uncomfortable and painful at times, especially when he exerts himself. As Yuku presses down on the side of the hose closest to the gaping void of All Might's missing lung and shoots off his energy towards his nearest injury that being the giant, sprawling scar on his ribcage. As his energy rapidly seeps into it, as Yuku feels the scar tissue slowly shrink beneath his palms. He quickly shuts off his quirk in the pause before the stream of energy can branch off to the next injury. A couple of seconds later, he activates it again, slamming down, adjusting his hose, then shooting off his energy. The giant scar shrinks a little more before he has to shut off his quirk again, then restarts. At the end of the third round, his fingertips slide over smooth, unmarked skin. All. Might's ribcage jolts as his breath hitches slightly and as Yuku's energy moves on to its next target. It ends up being kind of a long process. The repetitive activating and deactivating his quirk gradually turns into a sort of rhythmic pulsing once he finds the proper timing for things. One by one, All Might's old wounds slowly heal. Some are small, like stubborn little surface scratches that heal, right away, but others are a lot bigger, a lot deeper like remnants of a devastating, bone-shattering blow. Izuku doesn't need to ask to know who he got those injuries from. He has to focus hard on making sure that none of his energy slips past the hold he has on the other side of the hose and reaches All Might's lung. It takes an incredible amount of concentration and a decent chunk of energy, too even though the scar tissue and old wounds are easy enough to heal, there's still a lot of them, and some of them, like the one on All Might's ribcage, are pretty big. But is Yuku can do it. He doesn't want to push this off to another healing session. He can handle being a little extra tired. Besides, he's definitely still in the safe zone anyway. 
So he pushes onward, continuing to heal all, might bit by bit until finally, all that's left is his missing lung. Izuku shuts off his quirk for the last time and pulls away, opening his eyes. All Might's torso is a smooth expanse of tanned skin over hard muscle, completely free of any blemish. Izuku watches as a large hand hesitantly reaches up to cut the spot where his giant scar once was, long fingers slowly brushing over unmarred skin. All Might is silent for a very long time and Izuku doesn't feel it's right for him to be the first to break the silence. He doesn't know what's going on in All Might's head right now, but he's learned a lot about scars recently. He's had to learn to live with more scars than he ever thought he would have had to in an incredibly short amount of time. And he knows from experience that there tends to be an awful lot of messy emotions involved with them. He just hopes that with everything that's happened, and with all for one gone now, maybe he could have helped alleviate some of them. Eventually, All Might's hand leaves his torso and instead reaches for him. It rests on top of his head for a brief moment then slides down, gently pushing his curls aside. A warm pressure presses into his hairline. Thank you, my boy, All Might whispers into his curls. Knock knock knock. Midraya-kun? The sounds slowly filter into his ears as if they're full of cotton, and then it takes a few extra seconds for his brain to process them. Knock knock. Midraya-kun? Are you awake? Izuku groggily opens his eyes. There's a heavy lump of fluff on his chest sushi and pale light is gently trickling, in through his window. His eyes widen. Knock knock knock. Yo, Zuko get your ass up. Kakin yells through the door. I'm up, I'm up. Izuku yelps, wincing when he stresses his voice. He rolls sushi off of him and grabs his phone to check the time. Crap, he slept through his alarm again? Well. At least he's not super late this time he can still squeeze in breakfast if he hurries. His muscles, protest when he pushes himself off his bed, but he stifles a grunt and scrambles over to the door, opening it. Totoraki and Kakan are on the other side, the latter looking like he was just in the middle of sneering something particularly snide to the former when Izuku interrupts. Fucking finally. He scoffs, turning away with a sharp jerk of his head, get dressed already or you'll be fucking, late again. He marches over to the stairs and disappears. Totoraki looks back at Izuku, calm and smooth in contrast to Kakin's ruffled feathers. Izuku lets out a little sigh. Thanks for waking me up. And sorry I slept through my alarm again. It's alright. I'm glad you're sleeping well. A hint of mirth twinkles in his eyes. Although I don't think Aizawa sensei would forgive you if you overslept twice in a row. Even if you are his favorite. Izuku's cheeks heat up and he covers his face with his hands. Please don't, he moans, it's too early. You're cruel. Totoraki laughs, soft, more of a huff of air than anything, but it makes Izuku peek out through his fingers and smile. Why were you so tired last night anyway? Totoraki asks, tilting his head, I thought maybe you'd have. A hard time sleeping since you slept so much the night before, but it's almost like you crashed or something after school. Oh. Izuku shrivels in embarrassment. He had kind of pushed himself healing all might yesterday. Even though it doesn't take much to heal scar tissue and old wounds, there were a lot of them, and he wanted to get them all over within one session, so he maybe used just a little bit more energy than he should have. Not too much. He didn't exhaust himself or anything, but it was definitely enough to make him dead tired by the time he got back to the dorms. A few of their friends had wanted to watch a movie together in the lounge after dinner and he kind of just ended up passing out on Totoraki's shoulder about two minutes in. He must think he's terrible at movie, nights. Letting out a little laugh, Izuku shakes his head and says, Oh no, sorry. I just had a big injury to deal with during my lesson and it kind of took a lot out of me, that's all. He averts his eyes sheepishly. Sorry I fell asleep on you. Again. A light tinge of pink blossoms across Totoraki's cheeks. Don't worry about it. I like he cuts himself off abruptly as if he just bit his tongue, then coughs. I mean, are you feeling better now, then? Yeah, 
totally. Izuku immediately reassures, even though a, not really. Healing All Might took a bit more out of him than healing Ingenium did and there's still a lingering fatigue in his muscles that he has yet to shake off. But he expected that much and it will probably be gone by tomorrow so there's no need to worry anyone, about it. Totoraki smiles. Good. Taking a step back, he half turns away and asks, join me for breakfast when you're ready? A little thrill goes through his Yuku's chest and he grins, nodding enthusiastically. I'll meet you there. Just give me five minutes. He quickly darts back inside to get changed into his uniform and brush his teeth and hair before going downstairs. With 20 students, often eating at the same time, breakfast is never as quiet of an affair as it used to be, but Izuku doesn't find himself minding as much as he thought he would. He and Totoraki sit at the end of the table with Jiro and Yerazu and chat while they eat their breakfast. They don't get to talk for very long before Izuku has to leave early for his morning lesson with Recovery Girl, but it's refreshing to get to have an actual conversation with the other boy. Izuku's been so busy over the past few days, he feels like he's barely been able to spend any quality time with Totoraki ever since they kissed. Which is weird, right? They just got together shouldn't they be spending even more time together? That's why they wanted to be together right? To spend more time with each other than, normal friends. Don't new couples tend to do more stuff together? He doesn't know, this is also new to him. Still, he feels like he should put in a bit more effort, shouldn't he? It's almost as if Totoraki is the one doing all the work for their relationship, and he goes ahead and proves it yet again when Izuku leaves the infirmary and sees him waiting right outside for him. Totoraki smiles and, offers to walk him to homeroom, and Izuku acts like his heart doesn't melt just a bit. They're walking alongside each other in the hallway on their way to class right now. Izuku casts a quick glance at Totoraki, then looks straight ahead and sneakily reaches over to grab his hand. Bam! Out of the corner of his eye, he sees Totoraki's head turn to look at him. After a long, anxiety-inducing pause, his fingers slide more comfortably between his and he continues looking ahead as if nothing has changed. Izuku smiles. Success. It's almost worth the absolutely life-ruining, soul-crushing embarrassment he feels exactly 60 seconds later when they walk into class and Kaminari decides to cheerfully shout out, Gay A. For the whole class to hear. I'm sure most of you have heard at this point, that Madriya Kun will be doing his work study at Team Aiden. Aizawa says once homeroom starts, I know he didn't discuss exactly what your work studies will entail in much depth, but for obvious reasons Madriya Kun's experience will be very different from the rest of yours, more similar to his internship not to minimize it, of course, he adds with a glance to his Yuku. The Greenet nods, understandingly. However, Today we'll have people who have experienced it firsthand tell you how these are different from the internships. Listen carefully. Then, Aizawa turns to the door and calls out, Come in. Izuku's eyes widen in shock as the door slides open and Mirio, Nejire, and Tamaki enter in a single file line. What in the world? They didn't tell him they were coming to his class, today. The three third years at who stand at the top of, all our students. Aizawa says as the trio come to a stop at the front, also known as the Big Three. Izuku has to stop gawking in order to stifle a snort of laughter. The Big Three. That's so dramatic. For some reason that escapes Izuku, Mirio is standing with his arms crossed in front of his chest in a silly pose. When their eyes meet across the room, his senpai winks. Izuku very nearly then, snorts he has to smother it with his hand. Mirio's stupid grin widens. Meanwhile, the rest of Izuku's classmates can't seem to decide if they're impressed or not. They've already met the big three before fleetingly when they kidnapped Izuku that one time, and then later outside the hospital after the mall incident, but they've never been formally introduced. They kind of just know them as, Izuku's weird upperclassmen friends, along with whatever rumors they might have heard about them. Which are impressive rumors apparently. Izuku hasn't heard any, 
but maybe he's had his head stuck in the infirmary too long to pay much attention to hero student gossip. Either way, his classmates seem to be familiar with his senpai's reputation. The crown among the splendid A students. Ida, says, eyes wide. The ones closest to pro heroes among us. Yerazu adds. Kakan wrinkles his nose. These guys? Judgment drips off of every inch of his voice. Seriously? I didn't realize it was them. Kaminari whispers, leaning closer to him, Dude, Midraya Kun, you didn't tell us your senpais were the big three. Izuku shrugs cluelessly. He didn't know it either. Aizawa turns to the third years and nods. Go on and introduce yourselves briefly, please. Let's start with Imajiki Kun. Uh oh. Tamaki already looks like he was dragged here against his will. He sulked behind his two friends as they marched inside the classroom and unsurprisingly has been keeping his head down the entire time to avoid everyone's gazes. When Aizawa calls him out, he immediately tenses up and sends a single glance at the crowd of first years that sends chills up their spines, minus Izuku's there's a lot of anxiety in that glance, Izuku can relate before he promptly loses his nerve and turns to face the wall. Nejire giggles and takes the stage, don't mind him. That's a Majiki Tamaki. He's got the heart of a flea. I'm Nejire Hado. We were asked to talk to you guys about work studies. But, wait she blinks suddenly distracted by shoji she leans forward into his space hey hey why are you wearing a mask are you sick trying to look cool taken aback shoji starts to respond but before he can get more than a few words out her attention is then drawn to totoraki oh my you must be totoraki kun right right you used to have a scar but it's all gone now did Mido chan heal it you're so much more handsome now without it but how did you get it in the first place both as yuku and totoraki blink in shock at her blatant audacity that's totoraki starts ashido san if your horns break off will new ones grow in nejire whirls around can you move them well asui san you're a tree frog not a toad right she grins bright and bubbly there's so much i want to know about all of you mido chan why haven't you told me anything about your classmates she whines at him multiple heads turn to look his way izuku carefully considers his answer for a brief second then says in a light tone i think you are doing a perfectly good job asking questions for yourself shinsu lets out a wheezing snort behind him nejire gives a squeal of excitement you're right. Hey, hey, Ojiro-kun, can you support your whole body with your tail? Ojiro leans away as she moves into his space. Hey, hey, tell me. I wanna know. Aizawa, who has been steadily getting more and more annoyed, finally reaches his breaking point and activates his quirk, hair flying up around him as he glares at Nejire. This is extremely illogical, he growls. Don't worry. Eraser head. Mirio hastily reassures, I'm going last to wrap things up, right? Turning to face the class, he shouts enthusiastically, the future is going to be. Everyone stares at him in confusion. Grim. He finishes. That's what you were supposed to say, right? Izuku is puzzled. Was it? Mirio, as usual, doesn't seem bothered at all. All right. My Colin's response was a huge fail. His boisterous laughs echo throughout the classroom, only further confusing the first years. Amusement tickles Izuku's chest at the sound of his laughter. He really is just like All Might. Well, you guys look like you're not sure what's going on, right? Miru says, now standing behind the podium, we're third years who suddenly appeared to explain about work studies that aren't even required. That's confusing right he puts his hand on his chin and pretends to think you guys got your provisional licenses as first years right this year's first years are really energetic right besides it looked like my jokes didn't work earlier right his smile takes a turn and he suddenly lifts his fist into the air 
Why don't you all fight me at once? Everyone blinks. What? Is Yuku size? Oh, yeah. Just like All Might. I just wanna say, is Yuku rasps as he stands beside Aizawa with his arms folded, I don't approve. Noted, Aizawa grunts. They've gathered in Jim Gamma, Class 1A is standing on one side facing Mirio, who is nonchalantly stretching on the other side in preparation for their battle. They've all changed into their gym uniforms, except for is Yuku, who's in his healer, costume in case of injuries, which, in this case, is seeming very, very likely. Is this really necessary, Mirio Senpai? He asks pleadingly, they're just going to get hurt. Damn, Midraya kun, have a little faith in us, Saro snorts, stretching his arm. Is Yuku winces. It's not that he doesn't believe they're strong, it's just that. Well. Mirio is one of the big three for a reason. Handpicked, and personally trained to be All Might's successor by Sir Nightai, is Yuku doesn't need to have seen him in action before to know that he must be an incredibly skilled opponent. Combine that with what Mirio has told him of his quirk, and yeah, is Yuku is starting to fear for his classmates' safety. It's 19 against 1, Shinsu says, eyeing Mirio across the room. There's no way he'll win. Besides, Kamenari gives his Yuku a dismissive wave. What are you so worried about anyway? You know you can just heal our injuries in like two seconds. Actually, is Yuku sniffs, I can't. Everyone's heads swivel towards him, Aizawa's included. What? Is Yuku presses his lips together. Recovery girl was less than happy when she found out how tired he was after he healed All Might yesterday. She, was even less happy when he came in this morning still feeling the dregs of exhaustion lingering in his muscles. So he's been, benched, so to say, for the next couple of days. He's not allowed to use his quirk, both as a way to regain and store up as much energy as he can in preparation to regrow All Might slung on Friday, so that his Yuku has the weekend to recover from the worst of his exhaustion and as a punishment for pushing himself when he had promised to be careful even though he was being careful and he didn't push himself that hard, but one look from Recovery Girl was enough to cow him into just accepting his punishment without complaint. But how to explain this to his classmates? Telling them that he got in trouble would be embarrassing, but he can't exactly explain that he needs, to save his energy to regrow all might slung either. After a moment of consideration, he carefully says, I have a patient that I need to see to later that's going to require a lot of energy, so if you guys get injured now, I can't afford to heal you. That should be fine, his classmates don't usually ask too many questions when it comes to healer business. As nosy as they can be, even they, understand the importance of his patient's privacy. Murmurs of surprise ripple through the students, followed by unease. Seriously? When is Yuku not? Your Araka shrinks a bit. Oh dot is is this still okay, then? Recovery girl is still a fully capable healer, Aizawa says dryly, you all could also do well to not rely on Madraya Kun's quirk so much. He won't always be there to pick you up after a fight in the future. The unspoken command of toughen up is loud and clear. That only makes it worse, Tamaki suddenly mutters, catching them all by surprise. They look over to see him standing on the other side of the gym facing the wall, much like he was in the classroom. His voice is quiet and barely audible as he mumbles, for the work studies, it would have been enough for us to say, this, is how it was, and I learned a lot from it. Not everyone is filled to the brim with ambition. We can't end up with kids who are unable to recover after this. Is Yuku blinks, then says in a deadly sweet voice, if Miru Senpai physically disables anyone, I will personally kill him. Ha! Ah. Miru lets out a sharp bark of laughter. Tamaki glances over his shoulder at him. That's not what I you, misunderstand. Mido chan Nejai are chirps. Izuku turns to see her attempting to bend Ashido's horns, the pink-haired girl looking very uncomfortable while she does so. In the past, there was a student who got so frustrated they quit trying to become a hero and that caused all sorts of problems. Did you know that? Surprised, Izuku glances up at Aizawa, 
whose expression hasn't changed as he watches, Nejire through narrowed eyes. Her voice shifts then into a slightly more serious tone, still playful, but Izuku recognizes it as the one she uses when she's telling him something actually important. It's tough, isn't it, Tagatikan? If you don't think things through properly, this'll be rough. Really rough. Kakan peels his lips back and scoffs. Who cares? Whipping his head around to glare at, Mirio, he raises his hands threateningly and grins. You may be an upperclassman, but we've fought with pros plenty of times before. And we've fought villains before, too. Kirishima adds, coming to his side. So don't underestimate us. Mirio smiles, seemingly unconcerned, and nods. Right. You can come at me anytime, from anywhere. Who's first? As Izuku's classmates get into fighting stances and glance among themselves to decide who will make the first move, the freckled boy steps backwards and leans against the wall with a sigh. This will be good. He rubs his forehead tiredly. Aizawa casts him a brief glance before gruffly calling out encouragement to the others. They're quick to decide their pecking order, having the close combative fighters like Sato, Ojiro, Kirishima, and Ashido surround Mirio all at once before the long range, fighters move in. This plan, of course, is all blown to shit when Kakan rushes ahead of everyone and launches himself at Mirio while screeching, Die! Izuku knows what's coming next. Kakan's hand sparks, a bright explosion rushes towards Mirio, and then he smartly decides to close his eyes. Jiru's traumatized shriek tells him it was a wise decision. Mirio sputters out a brief apology and, then the sounds of explosions continue. Looks like Kakan doesn't seem to care that the opponent he's fighting is butt naked. Izuku, however, thinks he could live without the sight of his senpai beating up his best friend with his genitals on display. He keeps his eyes closed. You went for the face, huh? Mirio's voice says. There's the sounds of rocks shattering and then Izuku hears him, declare. I think I'll start with the long distance fighters. Jira shrieks again. He warped. His power isn't just slipping through things? What kind of strong quirk is that? Die. A series of explosions echo across the room and then Kakan suddenly lets out a pained grunt. Dark shadow roars, only to be cut off by the sound of a fist landing and Tokoyami crying out. More punches, follow, more hisses and grunts of pain. More thumps of bodies collapsing on the floor. Sounds like his classmates are having a hard time. If only there had been someone who warned them that this was a bad idea beforehand. What a pity. Power. Mirio's triumphant shout echoes throughout the gym. Tagata Mirio, is Yuku hears Aizawa say, as far as I know, he's the man closest to being number one. Including the pros. Is Yuku pauses and something about his tone has him opening his eyes and glancing up at him. As far as I know. How much does Aizawa know? Surely All Might would have told him if he knew about Mirio? No, no, he probably didn't mean it that way. After all, even as he is now without one for all, Mirio is incredibly powerful and skilled. He would no doubt be a wonderful, hero with his own quirk and who knows? Perhaps he could even take the number one spot too. Izuku's classmates can hardly stand their ground against him. He accidentally turns his head and looks back at the disastrous scene in front of him. But oh good, Mirio is wearing pants now. More than half of his class is sprawled on the ground in various positions of pain, so that's less good. He got more, than half of them in an instant. Izuku startles and whips his head around to see Totoraki standing on his other side. The boy narrows his eyes. He's the man closest to being number one. What are you doing here? Izuku asks, bewildered. Totoraki turns to him. I didn't get my provisional license, so. Izuku arches a brow and pointedly looks at Kakan, who is currently struggling to get up from, where he was previously curled up on the ground in agony. That didn't stop him, he says, it's not like you're fighting a real villain or something. He looks up at Aizawa, who simply gives a shrug of approval. Totoraki glances between him and the battlefield, then slowly steps away. He almost looks reluctant. 
Izuku feels like he just sent him into the lion's den. That's it for the long distance fighters. Mirio turns away from the smattering of students on the ground and perks up when he sees Totoraki. Oops. Forgot one. He takes a step forward, falls into the ground, disappears for two seconds, then shoots out right in front of Totoraki and knocks him out with an uppercut to the jaw. Izuku cringes. God. He's a terrible boyfriend. Alright, now we can focus on the close combat ones. Mirio brushes off his hands nonchalantly and turns around. Except he's naked again. Izuku's face turns bright red as he unwillingly gets an eyeful and immediately drops his gaze to the ground. His classmates grunt and cry out in pain as the upperclassman continues his assault. Izuku winces as he stares at the floor. Man, Mirio's really not holding back at all, is he? Izuku's. Starting to feel bad he knows he was giving his friends a bit of a hard time, but this is a little brutal. Kakan has seemingly recovered and lets out a loud battle cry as he dives back into the fray only to be abruptly cut off by another choked grunt. There's a thud, and then, power. Mirio shouts again. Groans fill the gymnasium. Is it done? Izuku weakly calls out, eyes still locked on, the floor. There's a moment of silence. The Nezawa stiffens beside him. Tagata Izuku shrieks in surprise as two muscular arms wrap around him from behind and swing him into the air. Mirio laughs loudly next to his ear, pinning his arms to his sides and pressing his back to his broad chest while he frantically squirms. Senpai! He exclaims in alarm, what what are you doing? Tagata, Aizawa says again, raising a hand as if he doesn't know whether or not to stop him. Mirio kun Tamaki glances up from his corner. Nejire visibly brightens. Eh? Are we kidnapping him? She sounds far too excited for Izuku's liking. Oi! Kakan shouts. He and the others are still struggling to get off the ground, but Izuku's cry caught the attention of his classmates. Kakan's eyes lock on, Izuku's thrashing form and he snarls. What the fuck are you doing with him? Put him down. But apparently training with class 1A has gotten Mirio feeling a bit playful, because his arm tightens around Izuku's midsection and he practically prances over to the first years, stopping just a few feet away. Haha. <laughs> he laughs boisterously, a new challenge has appeared. How will you all stop me now, that I've taken a hostage? His classmates tense up. Izuku stops struggling. Are you fucking kidding me? You can't do anything that would harm our dear Madriya-kun, now can you? But holding him also leaves me exposed to or does it? Izuku can practically hear the devilish grin in Mirio's voice. He's having way too much fun with this. Will you take the risk? What are you going to do? Your hostage needs saving quick. I might steal him away. Kakan snarls wordlessly, pushing himself up onto his feet. Fuck you. His other classmates are getting riled up easily as well, struggling to get back up even though they just took a beating. And well, that's flattering and all, but Izuku can't help but feel a little annoyed right now. He didn't sign up to be a damsel in distress today, he squirms in Mirio's hold. Senpai, he complains. Ah, ah, ah. Mirio's voice is right in his ear and Izuku can't help the slight flush that creeps up his neck. His senpai's arms tighten around him, pressing him even more firmly against his body, and Izuku suddenly recalls the fact that Mirio is still very much naked. He can practically feel every muscle in the taller boy's body pressed against him, from his burly pecs, to his rock-hard ABS, to his to his Izuku's brain short circuits. Excuse me. He slams his head back and breaks Mirio's nose. Ha. Ah. Kakan's bark of laughter echoes throughout the gym. Mirio drops his Yuku in surprise and pain, probably and the Greena quickly regains his balance and attempts to swipe his legs out from under him. He actually manages to land a kick on, Mirio's knee, but since he's apparently made of brick he doesn't go down easily, and by that point he's had enough time to recover from his shock and, well at least his Yuku's defended his own honor.
Muriel proceeds to knock him on his ass in a decidedly more gentle fashion than he did with the rest of his classmates. It still hurts, but it's definitely worth it. Sorry I broke your nose, is Yuku. Apologizes for the 50th time, grimacing as he tosses the blood-soaked gauze into the trash can and presses a clean one against Mirio's face. No worries. Mirio lets out a nasally laugh, scratching the back of his head, I totally had it coming. His grin turns into a slight grimace as his Yuku presses down gently to try and stop the bleeding. The freckled boy insisted on taking him to the infirmary himself after he wrapped up his demonstration in the gym, but they had to stop in the middle of the hallway to change the gauze since his nose bled through it. Sorry, is Yuku repeats guiltily, I didn't think I'd hit you so hard. Midraya kun, Midraya kun, it's fine, Muriel reassures with light exasperation, trust me, sir hits me harder than that. He grins, as if that's supposed to make him feel better. Is Yuku presses his lips together. Cool, I'm gonna have a talk with him then. Mirio makes a noise and his Yuku begins leading him away. Come on, let's get you to the infirmary. They continue walking down the hallway until they come to a stop in front of Recovery Girl's office. Is Yuku knocks twice, then slides the door open. His mentor glances up from her computer. As soon as, her eyes land on Mirio. Her face morphs into a displeased expression. You know what I said, Midraya Kun. She turns back to her screen, waving her hand dismissively. Those three are your responsibility now. I thought you didn't want me to use my quirk until Saturday? Izuku protests, guiding Mirio over to one of the beds. Recovery girl clicks her tongue irritably. And you'll do everything, but use your quirk. Of course. He agrees, then turns and starts, cleaning up Mirio's nose. Once the bleeding is mostly under control and he's checked it over, he says, alright, I'm gonna set it real quick. It's gonna start bleeding again so he plops the gauze in Mirio's hand. Get ready with this. K, comes the nasally response. Carefully grabbing Mirio's nose, he sets it with a few quick motions and gives everything a once over before calling his mentor. She comes to his side, checks his work, then begrudgingly kisses Mirio on the cheek. The boy lets out a sigh of relief as his nose is healed. Thank you, recovery girl. He says gratefully. Yes, yes, she grumbles, now both of you, out of my office. Right. She's still a little pissed off at him. Giving Mirio a sheepish smile, Izuku jerks his head towards the door and leads the way out his senpai following after him. Once they're in the hallway, Izuku says, so. I guess I'll see you later, then? Before he can turn away, Miru stops him. Wait. Izuku pauses and tilts his head. Do you have a second? Izuku blinks. Oh great. Then Miru's hands are on his shoulders and he's being steered down the hall. Right this way, Kuhai. Wh what wait? What? Where are we going, is Yuku stammers, we have to go back to class. This won't take long. Mirio chirps, stopping in front of a smaller door that is Yuku doesn't recognize. He phases his head through it, then sticks his hand in and unlocks it from the inside before pulling it open. Is Yuku blanches at the side of a supply closet. Wait, 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 wait and we go. Mirio says, pushing him in and closing the door behind them. They're immediately shrouded in darkness, but he feels around the wall until he finds a light switch that illuminates the cramped space that they're in. Ooh. Cozy. Izuku grumbles in annoyance. Thankfully it's not as small as the last supply closet he was shoved into, but he's had quite enough of Mirio moving him around as he pleases for one day. Senpai, he whines, having to crane, his neck to look up at the taller boy this close. What's going on? What do you want? Looking down at him, Mirio's bright grin dims ever so slightly into something more calm. Actually, I've been meaning to talk to you, he says, I just feel like it's been a while, you know? Eh? Izuku blinks in surprise. Oh. Uh, yeah, it has I guess. Mirio just wants to catch up? He supposes it has been a 
while since they've hung out properly. He feels bad for neglecting his senpai. But did he have to shove him into a subly closet to tell him this? Couldn't he have just come up to him during lunch? Yeah, Miru says, I don't know if All Might told you this, but he hasn't given me one for all yet. Oh, so this is a one for all conversation. Supply closet makes sense then. I know, Izuku replies. Well, I figured anyway. He would have told me. He said he wanted me there when he passed it on to you. He pauses. Which, by the way, what happened with that? I thought he was going to give it to you during summer break so you wouldn't be in school in case something went wrong? Mirio seems to hesitate for a moment, then continues, well, yeah, we were gonna wait for you to come back from your training camp, but then, you know. Kamino happened, and then everything else happened, and we've just kind of gotten distracted, you know? I've been training with Sir for months now and All Might since the summer, so we're pretty sure my body is ready to receive one for all, but then All Might mentioned that you were trying to heal him so we figured we'd just put it off for now. There's no rush, anyway. Izuku nods and Mirio's eyes lighten up a bit. Earlier you said you were saving your energy to heal someone later. You meant All Might, right? Yeah, he says. I'm not using my quirk for the next couple of days so I can rest up, but the plan is to heal him on Saturday morning so I have the weekend to recover. All I have left is to regrow his lung. Wow, Mirio breathes. He leans back. Head tilted in consideration. I think even after you heal him I'll make him wait a bit. I feel bad for the guy. He deserves to enjoy his quirk at its fullest power at least for a little while before he gives it to me. His Yuku smiles, warmth blooming in his chest. It's nice that Mirio is so considerate of All Might's feelings on this matter. Even when it would be so easy to eagerly accept the power, bestowed on him as soon as it's offered to him, he's willing to wait even longer for it to make his mentor happier. All Might has found a truly wonderful successor. But when I do get one for all and become the number one hero, Mirio says, Grinning cockily once again as he pushes his Yuku's nose with his finger, I expect to see you in my agency as my healer, my little Kuhai. His Yuku lets out a huff, of laughter and opens the door of the closet. Yeah, get in line. My entire class already has dibs. He steps out into the hallway. Now come on, we've both gotta get back to class. I wasn't kidding when I said I would steal you away. Mirio crows as he walks after him. The hallway is still empty since everyone is still in class, but Izuku makes sure to lower his voice slightly anyways as he asks. So, what will you do once All Might does give his quirk to you? Mirio shrugs. More training, I guess. Preparing me to be number one. He flashes him a blinding grin, then ponders. Sir did also mention bringing All Might in to help out with this villain that's been causing some trouble over Hall, I think he was called? He shakes his head. But anyway, now that All Might and Sir are back, together, they're pretty adamant about training me together. Is you coincis? Yikes. Good luck with that. Mirio laughs, short and loud. Thanks. They have to part ways to leave for their own classes after that but not before Mirio manages to snag his Yuku and ruffle his curls into an unmanageable mess. The blonde cackles while he shrieks in indignant fury and darts away a moment later, leaving him, reeling. His Yuku lets out an exasperated huff. All Might's successor or not, Mirio's hero agency is the last place he would work at as a healer. Chapter 44 Last Chapter Folks in comparison to the rest of the week, Friday is startlingly normal. Izuku wakes up for his usual reasons in the early hour of the morning and runs with Ida as the sun rises above the horizon. The only minor thing different, he does is that he prepares Totoraki's favorite tea for him when he gets back from his run so that it's ready for him when he wakes up, and then he and the other boy enjoy a nice calm breakfast together in their own private corner of the dining room. That earns him a sneaky kiss on the cheek before he leaves for his morning meet-up with recovery girl that has him blushing the entire way there. And, to his delight, Totoraki is waiting for him outside in the hallway afterwards and they walk to class together hand in hand yet again. 
His morning classes are as average and unremarkable as they could possibly be. Even their afternoon hero lesson ends up being a run-of-the-mill obstacle course race that his Yuku can't do much to participate in, so he's left with plenty of time to chat with All Might, at the finish line. It's refreshing to talk to him again, just the two of them it feels like it's been ages since they've just talked to each other. And not about healing, or how is Yuku's doing, not even about anything in particular. All Might will say something absolutely ridiculous and his Yuku will respond with some dry sarcasm that he's probably picked up from his mentor and then All Might will, let out loud, booming laughs that resonates his Yuku's very soul and bring a smile to his face. It feels good, it feels natural, but despite everything, his Yuku can't help the underlying anticipation that's been thrumming beneath his veins for the past two days. He's certain his friends can tell that something's up even if they're not sure exactly what. They do their best to keep him in good spirits, by flocking around him in the common room at night, hanging out with him, making him laugh at their silly antics until his stomach hurts. It serves as a perfect distraction and before he knows it, it's Saturday morning. His anticipation turns into excitement. He's meant to meet Recovery Girl and All Might in the infirmary at 11 am, but thanks to his nightmares and his nerves, is Yuku is awake long, before that. He's about to go get ready to go on a solo run Nita, shockingly enough, actually likes to sleep in an extra couple of hours on the weekend, so as Yuku doesn't have a partner this time but then he realizes that he's supposed to be saving his energy, not burning it off. So he plops back down on his bed, leg bouncing up and down in a desperate attempt to get rid of his nerves, and slowly, realizes the fact that the next few hours are going to be sheer torture. They wanted him to get a good night of sleep, to be as well rested as possible before doing this. And yeah, Izuku understands the importance of that, but sleeping that kind of hit or miss for him lately. They know that. How could they possibly expect him to sleep well when he's so excited about this? He lies back down and, closes his eyes with a sigh. 30 seconds later, he sits right back up and hops off his bed. Nope, not happening. Luckily for him, Recovery Girl also ordered him to eat a big breakfast, so he can just spend his time making that. It's early enough that nobody is awake yet, which means he'll have the kitchen all to himself a rarity in the Class 1A dorm. His Yuku eagerly makes his way down to the first floor and enters the kitchen, looking around with wide eyes. Kakin has practically banned him from here which he thinks is rather unfair. Sure, he might not be the best cook, but it's not like he's going to blow up their place. Two hours later, he finds himself regretting his previous thought. A drowsy Kakin lets out a giant yawn as he walks into the kitchen to see his Yuku covered in flour, and batter. The, green it looks like he's on the verge of tears as he struggles to flip the charred remains of. Something on a frying pan. A couple of pieces of eggshells are trapped in his curls, and a single yolk lays abandoned on the countertop, slowly inching its way across the surface. The stench of burned bacon permeates the air. Kakim's eye twitches. What the fuck are you doing? His yuku whirls around, relief flooding his gaze. Kakin. He quickly glances between his friend and his disastrous food. Oh I, I tried I wanted to make pancakes and then bacon and well. A little bit of eggs too, but I gave up on those a while ago um. His voice takes a nervous edge as Kakin stomps over and swipes the spatula out of his hands. I told you to stay the fuck out of the kitchen, Zuku. He snarls, waving the spatula threateningly at the smaller boy's throat as he turns off the stove with his other hand, you're a shit cook and now all this food's gonna go to waste. Why the fuck are you making so making so much at ass o'clock in the morning anyway? Gulping, Izuku glances away anxiously before saying, Um, remember the other day when I said I had to see a patient that's going to require a lot of energy to heal? I, uh, I'm going to see them today. What? He snaps, frowning, oh that? What the hell is that about anyway? Who are you healing? Izuku presses his lips together and gives him a slight chastising look. Doctor patient confidentiality? Kakin. Kakin grinds his teeth in irritation. Fuck. Fine, whatever. 
You're not leaving school again, are you? Izuku shakes his head, no. It shouldn't take long. Recovery girl told me to eat a big breakfast in order to have as much energy as I can so I'm not as tired afterwards. He casts a pitiful glance at his burned food. Kakan narrows his eyes, looking like he wants to ask more, but then scoffs and turns his yuku around with one hand. Get the fuck out of my kitchen, he grunts, shoving him away with a foot on his rear, his yuku squeaks and scrambles into the dining room. Thirty minutes later, the blonde re-emerges from the kitchen with two plates of delicious smelling food. He places the one stacked dramatically high with pancakes, eggs, and bacon in front of Izuku, who gasps in delight. Kaken. Izuku's eyes sparkle. Thank you. Kaken grunts and sits across from him with his own reasonably piled plate. You're, cleaning up that garbage mess you left. And then mine. Izuku is already digging in and hums agreeably around his mouth full of eggs. Kaken snorts. As they eat, a few of their classmates soon start trickling in and begin making their own meals. Ida balks at the state of the kitchen and Izuku calls out his apologies. He perks up when Totoraki enters and invites him to come sit with them, much to Kaken's displeasure. Totoraki, a slow starter like Izuku, drowsily leans against his puff of curls and takes great interest in his food. I didn't know you could cook, he murmurs. He can't, Kakan grunts, eyeing them disdainfully, I made it for him. His voice has a slight tone of superiority, as if to say ha, huh, I can make something as Yuku actually likes. Unfazed or oblivious Totoraki, blinks slowly and looks down at the food. Can I have some? No, Kakan snaps immediately. Sure, Izuku agrees. Kakin curls his lip. I didn't cook for him as Yuku cuts off a piece of pancake and feeds it to Totoraki. The taller boy hums appreciatively around his fork. It's good. Kakin's eye twitches again, this time in disgust at the blatant domestic display before him. Fuck you. He, abruptly stands up from the table and whirls around. Fuck both of you. Izuku smiles happily as he stalks away. Thanks for breakfast. Finally, at 10.30 am, he can't stand to wait any longer. Totoraki looks a little confused when he hastily excuses himself, giving him much the same explanation that he gave Kaken, but even though he doesn't seem to quite understand he wishes him luck anyway and, kisses him on the cheek. And well. That right there is just like an extra shot of energy all on its own, and Izuku practically skips the entire way to the infirmary with a goofy smile on his face. As he makes his way down the hall, he notices that the door is already open and that there are multiple voices coming from inside. Slowing down, he peeks his head around the door frame and blinks in, surprise. The infirmary is filled with people. Recovery girl and all might, of course but also Sir Nightai, Mirio, Principal Nezu, and an elderly man that looks vaguely familiar. They're all chatting idly with each other, but Mirio's eyes land on Izuku as soon as his head pops in. Ku hi. He chirps, catching everyone's attention, you're early. All eyes land on him and Izuku shrinks, slightly. I told you he'd come early. Recovery girl rolls her eyes. Well, come on in. Midraya kun Smiling sheepishly, Izuku walks in and immediately gets pulled into a hug and subsequent hair ruffle by Mirio. How are you doing? Sleep well? Well enough, Izuku replies simply, glancing around at the three unexpected guests, so before he can even begin to ask anything, All Might hastily, says, Oh, I'm sorry, I hope you don't mind that I invited some people. It's just a big day, you know? He chuckles nervously. Izuku waves his hands and reassures him, No, no, it's alright, I understand. He's starting to think that having loved ones around when being healed might be a common thing. He's going to have to get used to having an audience. But this is alright, he already knows most of, these people. Izuku smiles up as Sir Nightai, reaching out to shake his hand politely. It's nice to see you again, sir. The hero smiles back and takes his hand. It's nice to see you as well. It's been a while. He arches a brow. 
if I'm not mistaken and I know I'm not Mirio and All Might let out an identical bark of laughter. First years are going to be allowed to partake in work studies, this year. Will I be seeing you in my agency with Kami-san again? Izuku opens his mouth to reply, but Mirio does it for him. Haha, <laughs> nope. Sorry sir, Midoriya-kun's already been snatched up by Team Aiden, he says, believe me, I'm as heartbroken as you are. The betrayal. He presses the back of his palm to his forehead dramatically. Izuku rolls his eyes at his antics. Oh come on. To sir, night eye, he says, but, yeah, sorry. Don't apologize. Sir night eye shakes his head. New experiences are always beneficial. There's much that Ingenium can teach you that I could not. Regardless, I'm glad to see that you are doing well. His voice sounds genuine as he gazes down at Izuku warmly. Thank you, sir. Izuku dips his head politely, then glances over when All Might catches his attention. And this is a former teacher of mine, he says, gesturing to the elderly man sitting in Izuku's desk chair, Gran Torino. As Izuku reaches out to shake his hand, he once again can't help thinking that he looks vaguely familiar. He's wearing a hero costume and All Might introduced him with a hero name so obviously he is indeed a hero. It takes a couple of seconds, but then it clicks. You were in Kamino, he says and All Might stiffens slightly behind him. You stopped Shigaraki from going after me and Totoraki-kun. Gran Torino's expression doesn't change much, but he nods. Yep, that was me. Izuku stares at him. Then gives him a shaky smile. Thank you, he says softly. No problem, kid, the man replies with a hint of gruffness. Izuku straightens up and slowly turns back, around. Principal Nezu is sitting on one of the beds and Izuku nods his greeting to him before looking at All Might. Blue eyes meet green. Anticipation sits heavy in the air, making everyone fall quiet for a second. Izuku's scarred throat bobs as he swallows. Well. This is it. The moment they've all been waiting for. The moment he's been working towards for well over a year at this point. He, closes his eyes, takes a deep breath, and opens them again. He's ready. Turning to look at his mentor, Izuku nods. Let's do this. She nods back. And, much like with Ingenium, she steps back and lets him take the lead. He guides All Might to sit down on one of the beds and has him remove his shirt, revealing the scarless torso beneath. Apparently, All Might has not yet shown Sir Naitai and Grant. Tori know this development yet, because as Yuku hears them both inhale sharply behind him. The blonde smiles at them over his shoulder and as Yuku doesn't need to glance back to know what their expressions must look like. Instead, he announces that he's first going to feel with his cork and make sure everything's as it should be before touching All Might's chest, quickly shutting off his quirk. And yes, everything's as it was last time. No scars, no old wounds. No shadows of shattered bones. Just one giant chasm of a missing lung that he has to fill. A cluster of nerves flutters in his stomach. Izuku hesitates, then opens his mouth to speak you are going to go slow, Midraya kun Recovery girl's voice reaches his ears. He glances over to see her gazing at him steadily. You've been training, for this for a long time. You're stronger than you were last time and you have much more control over your quirk. You are going to go slow, you are not going to shock your body, and you will not exhaust yourself. Her words are confident, not wavering for a single second. Then, still holding his gaze, she tilts her head. But, if you do, I have everything I need here in order to stabilize you and, replenish your nutrients. You will be okay, she says firmly. Izuku lets out a slow, shaky sigh of relief bless his mentor for knowing his worries without him having to voice them aloud. Despite his eagerness to heal All Might, the last time he did this he ended up in a freaking coma. But no, of course, she's right. He was younger then, inexperienced. He had never healed anything bigger than a dog bite before and the speed of his energy suddenly rushing out into All Might's stomach, into the rest of his other wounds, is probably what shocked his body the most. 
She's right, of course. She's always right. He'll be fine, if he takes it slow. What would he do without his mentor? He smiles as he gazes at her earnestly. Thank you, he whispers. Recovery girl gives him an encouraging nod and steps back. Izuku turns back to all, my, who is looking down at him. The freckled boy's hands look small on his chest, but he can feel the man's heart beating strongly beneath them, can feel the slight rise and fall as the single lung expands and contracts. He closes his eyes, focuses on the missing gap in All Might's energy where his other lung should be, and then slowly, ever so slowly, begins releasing his own energy into it. His mind flashes back to how this was the first time his energy draining out of him rapidly, desperately trying to reach the wounds as fast as possible, trying to fill the missing pockets in the man's life force. The flow is hardly anything more than a trickle now, slow and easily controlled through weeks months of training and practice. He eases his energy into All Might's body gradually, he, won't take any risks by going too fast. After all, now he has all the time in the world. The empty chasm in All Might's chest begins to fill up slowly. Not much happens at first, but as more time passes, Izuku starts to notice All Might's energy around the missing pocket swirling rapidly, as if getting excited. He also notices the fatigue that starts to creep in on his own muscles, a small hint, a shadow of an ache that steadily begins to grow, but he determinedly pushes onward. It doesn't matter if he's exhausted after this. It's for All Might. Everything, all his hard work for the past few months, has been for this moment, has been for him, so Izuku would gladly suffer a little exhaustion for the man. His own life force is distinguishable from All Might's, recognizable to him. It seeps, into All Might effortlessly, slipping into the empty space of his missing lung like a milky golden light slowly filling it up bit by bit until not a single space within All Might is hollow. And for a moment, All Might's energy sings. It embraces Izuku's energy, entwines with it, and there's such an unmistakable feeling of wholeness that it steals Izuku's breath away and then his quirk, the activates. It takes him a few seconds to realize that he isn't the one that turned it off. There's nothing left for him to heal. Izuku slowly opens his eyes and lifts his head. All Might meets his gaze. And for the first time in six years, he takes a long, deep breath, filling both his lungs, his chest expanding wide beneath his Yuku's hands. The grin he sends down at his Yuku is positively blinding, ha ha. His Yuku squeals as All Might suddenly puffs up into his muscled form right in front of him and scoops him up into his arms, jumping off the bed and swinging him around. Mirio, Sir Night Eye. Recovery Girl and the others immediately erupt into cheers. All Might's signature booming laughter reverberates in his chest right next to his Yuku's ear, echoing in every inch of his being as he's spun, around and around. Startled, his Yuku tries to cling on desperately, but the exhaustion of his endeavor hits him then and all he can do is feebly scrabble at All Might's chest. But it's alright because a moment later All Might stops spinning and simply holds him closely. Overjoyed laughter fading away into something that sounds a bit tighter, a bit more choked. Oh, my boy, my boy. He presses a kiss, onto his Yuku's forehead and the freckled boy is too tired to startle again. Thank you, thank you my boy. I could never thank you enough for everything that you have done for me, Midraya is Yuku. Thank you a million times over, my boy, thank you, thank you. He leans down to press his forehead against his Yuku's. Still tucked in the man's arms, his Yuku giggles drowsily and flushes. You're welcome. He, did it. He really did it. All Might's forehead is pressed against his and he can't feel a thing he really healed him. He did it. A light, bubbling laugh escapes his lips. Then, his head slides away from All Might's and he slumps over on the man's chest. Young Madraya. All Might stiffens, crying out in alarm. Are you alright? Still smiling against his chest, Izuku hums, Beachy. A nap, sounds nice, though. Is he okay? He hears Mirio ask. Does he need fluids or something? Sir Night Eye's voice demands loudly somewhere close to Izuku's head. Hold on, hold on, give me a second. 
Recovery girl's footsteps approach him. Tasha Nori Kun, lower him please. His Yuku feels all might kneel down, and then there's something cold pressed to his wrist. He blearily turns his head and blinks, at his mentor. Hi, he says. Hi, she replies, how do you feel? He yawns, tired. Nuzzling against All Might's surprisingly comfy chest, he mumbles, gonna take a fat nap back at the dorms. He hears Miru snort. All Might chuckles, well, if anyone deserves to take a nap, it's you. He smiles drowsily. Yay. Recovery girl makes quick work of checking his vitals, then nods in satisfaction, all right, he's not in any danger. He just hired himself out, that's all. If you could do him a favor and carry him back to the dorms, that would be great. Of course. All Might says, it's the very least I could do after all he's done. Izuku's stomach lurches slightly as All Might straightens back up. Mirio's face pops into his field of vision. Good job, Midraya kun He says cheerfully, reaching up to ruffle his hair much more gently than usual. Izuku blinks sleepily. Thanks. Good job. Midraya kun Principal Nedzu chirps. Good job, kid, Gran Torino says, that's a damn amazing quirk you have there. Midraya kun Izuku glances up to see Sir Naitai standing in front of him and All Might. His eyes are suspiciously shiny and they flicker between him and All Might rapidly, I adjust he takes a deep breath. Thank you. A flicker of curiosity tickles him and Izuku tilts his head. You knew this would happen. He says, you knew I would heal him one day. I know, Sir Knight Tyre replies, but knowing it will happen and actually seeing it happen it's always different. Now there's. He looks up at All Might, eyes warm. Certainty. The word comes out in one relieved, breath. All Might's trademark grin widens. Is Yuku's gaze turns to him. And you? Everything's feeling fine, right? Perfect? All Might laughs incredulously. How could I feel anything but perfect? You're the one who isn't feeling good. Drained of energy and still all you can do is worry about others. Selfless to the end reminds me of someone I know, Sir Knight I says, pointedly looking at all, might. All might makes a face of mock offense. I never said it was a bad thing, he mutters petulantly, before turning to look down at his yuku, eyes earnest. But seriously. Young Madraya let me take care of you now. You have done more than enough for me, far more than I could ever repay you for in a thousand lifetimes. I never thought that I would be able to feel this way again. You have given, me the life that I love back, you have twisted my fate and saved me from a terrible demise at the hands of a villain that you so cleverly outwitted. You, Madraya is Yuku, are a greater hero than I will ever be. You are my hero and I thank you for saving my life. Izuku stares up at him. Tears escape from his eyes and his breath hitches as he quickly turns and buries his face in All Might's shirt. The man's chest rumbles as he chuckles and his large hand shifts to rub his trembling shoulders. A kiss is pressed into the top of his curls and he whimpers. All of the sudden, Miru snaps his fingers. That's it. Hero. Bewildered. Izuku pulls his tear-streaked face away from All Might's chest to look at him in confusion. Huh? Mirio grins brightly. Your healer name. Hero. Izuku's brows, furrow. What? You still need one, don't you? Mirio asks, it's perfect? Izuku grimaces. It's so cheesy. But it's perfect for you, Mario insists enthusiastically, you're going to be a hero healer. Every time you save a hero, you basically indirectly save all the people that they save in the future. Izuku blinks tiredly. I don't think that's how the not to mention all the people that, you will save on your own in the future, Principal Nedzu adds, a quirk like yours has virtually no limitations when it comes to healing physical injuries. I have no doubt you will one day become the personal hero and inspiration of countless individuals. Izuku flushes. I and like I said, you are already my hero. All Might repeats, like it doesn't nearly send him into cardiac arrest again, is Yuka wheezes. I recovery girl smiles softly up at him. Didn't you say you always wanted to be a hero when you were younger? Okay. 
is Yuku squeaks, just to get them to stop, then rolls around and buries his flustered face in All Might's chest once more. Fine. His voice comes out muffled. The adults and Mirio around him all laugh like the traitors they are and he slumps in All Might's arms. Can I go take a nap now? He mumbles. All right, all right, All Might chuckles, yes, you've earned it. He readjusts his grip so as Yuku's legs are more comfortable and tucks his head against his bicep. Say goodbye to young Madriya, now. Bye, Kuhai. Mirio's hand gently ruffles his hair yet again. Sleep tight. Goodbye, Madriya kun Sir Knight I says, I hope to see you again soon, rest well, Madriya kun Principal Nedzu says. See you later, kid, Gran Torino says. Take it easy for the rest of the day, recovery girl orders softly, and you can boss those young heroes of yours around and have them make you a good meal. Healer's privilege. Izuku lets out a drowsy snort. Bye guys, he rasps. They all call out their various goodbyes once more as All Might carries him out, the door. Neither of them say a word, during the journey back to the door. It doesn't seem necessary. Everything that needed to be said has been said and whatever else that cannot be put into words remains unspoken in the way All Might steadily holds his Yuku closely to his chest in a silent promise, the green at nuzzling his bicep and letting out a trembling breath as one final tear slips down his cheek to meet his smiling lips. It, almost doesn't seem real he feels like he's floating through some sort of dream. But All Might's heartbeat is loud in his ears and the way his chest rises and falls beneath his Yuku's cheek is a constant reminder that this is real. This is the new reality that he has created, the one where All Might will reign supreme as the symbol of peace in all his strength and glory for the rest of his days. We'll pass down one for all to Mirio and train him to be the next number one hero, we'll live to see his legacy, we'll live to retire, to grow old to do all these things that for the longest time he believed he wouldn't be able to do because he thought all for one had stolen that future from him well, as Yuku took it right back. And he gave All Might the future he rightfully deserves. They arrive at, the doorstep of Heights Alliance. Even though healing All Might felt like it took ages, as Yuku's only actually been gone for around half an hour, which means the rest of his classmates are probably all up by now. All Might pauses before the door and tightens his hold on him ever so slightly, lowering his head to briefly press his lips against his Yuku's head again in one last silent thank you. As Yuku, smiles sleepily and nuzzles him back. Then, All Might carefully shifts him to free his hand so he can open the door and Madriya Kun? Whoa, what happened? Madriya Kun. As his classmates' alarmed voices immediately rush over to him. As Yuku drowsily turns and lolls his head. I'm alive, he reassures. What the fuck? Kakin stomps towards him and stares with poorly concealed worry. What, the hell happened? Before as Yuku can reply, All Might laughs boisterously, not to worry, young Rikigu. Young Madriya simply tired himself out using his quirk. You know how tricky it can be sometimes but. He did a marvelous job, as usual. Totoraki stares at his Yuku's limp form incredulously. What the hell did you do? Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. All Might says, sorry, can't ask questions. It's healer, business, you know? Even I couldn't get answers out of this one. He lightly jostles his Yuku in his arms and chuckles. Are you fucking kidding me? Kakin snaps, but why don't you all help him feel better today? All Might suggests, he's very tired. And I think considering all the hard work he does for you and everyone else he deserves a bit of pampering. At this point, Izuku is glad he's, too exhausted to do more than blush lightly in embarrassment. All Might hums in thought, gazing at the small crowd of teenagers in front of him. And if what I heard is true. He suddenly dives forward and shoves Izuku into Totoraki's arms. You are the best man for the job. He ruffles his bicolored hair into a tousled mess before straightening up with a wink. Treat him well, young Totoraki, by now. He disappears in the blink of an eye, leaving a drowsy Izuku in his boyfriend's arms surrounded by his bewildered classmates. They stare after him for a moment, then Kakin whirls on the greenette. Zuku, 
What the hell? He demands. I told you I'd be using a lot of energy today, Izuku replies, blinking slow and tired. Jesus I know, but fuck, what did you do? Kakan asks worriedly, All Might said not to ask, Ida says reluctantly. Kakan lets out a growl of frustration in response. Reaching out, Izuku takes his friend's hand and gives him a reassuring smile. Kakan. I'm alright. Just tired. Can you make katsudon for lunch? Kakan stares at him incredulously. What the sure, fuck, fine, whatever. Yay. Totoraki blinks. Can I have some? Fuck no. Kakan snaps, glaring at him heatedly. Totoraki looks disappointed. Giggling, Izuku curls up against Totoraki's chest and tucks his head underneath his chin, closing his eyes with a soft sigh. Aw you, Midori-kun is so cute when he's sleepy. Ashido's voice coos. He's really tuckered out, huh? Sero says. Should I carry him to bed? Totoraki asks. Yes, Izuku agrees emphatically. I don't think you'll wake up. For a while if you go to bed now, Midriya-kun, Ida says, ever the logical one, you'll ruin your sleep schedule. Izuku grumbles tiredly into Totoraki's shoulder, then mumbles, fine, I'll nap here with you guys, then. Wake me up. HMMRHH, he groans. Later. A couple of his friends snicker. Alright, sure, Kaminari says. Totoraki grunts slightly and shifts his arms under his weight, Izuku feels him start walking over to the lounge and hears the others begin to disperse as well. As Totoraki gently puts him down on the couch, Kaminari adds, We were just starting a Mario Kart tournament, though, so sorry if we're a bit loud. Izuku waves off his apology and sinks into the cushion. Honestly, he could sleep through a hurricane right now. There's just a couple of things missing. He opens his eyes. Totoraki kun. Kakan. Cuddle with me, he demands. The two boys glance at each other simultaneously. I mean, you can either get one or the other, Kakan says, you're not fucking getting both. Izuku stares at them unmovingly. Cuddle with me. Both of you. Now. Totoraki, unsurprisingly, is the first one to obey. He moves to sit on Izuku's right side, wrapping an arm around his waist and letting him snuggle up to his warm chest. Lip curled in disgust, Kakan glares at them with his arms folded. Izuku stares at him expectantly. After a few moments, Kakan finally caves with a loud huff. You're fucking bossy when you're tired, you know that, Zuku? He grumbles, stomping over and plopping down on his other side making the smaller boy bounce slightly. Izuku smiles, and curls up so that his legs are on top of the blonde's thighs, then sinks back into his boyfriend's warmth, closing his eyes. His friends resume their game, and soon the familiar sounds of video game music and laughter fills his ears. He can hear the rest of his classmates milling about too, doing whatever they would do on a normal, lazy Saturday morning. Despite the competitive banter that's, going on between his friends playing, a sense of peace fills him and he lets out a quiet, content sigh. He did it. He really did it. All of his months and months of hard work has finally paid off. He's finally accomplished this goal that he's had for so long that he almost feels a little empty without it, a little lost about what to do next. A memory bubbles up to the surface of his mind and, it's not the first time it's come to his mind today. The day he met All Might, the day he first healed him. What a disaster that had been, but by God, if it wasn't the best thing that had ever happened to Izuku. He then thinks about the way the gaping chasm in the man's chest had filled with Izuku's energy. There had been a brief moment at the end, when it had filled to the brim something strange, had happened. Their energy had become intertwined. Whole. A part of Izuku lives within All Might now. He'd never really thought about it before, him giving pieces of his own life force to the people that he chooses to heal, but it's a rather nice thought, actually. All Might's words echo in his head. The very core of being a healer no, of being a hero, is having the will to sacrifice oneself for, another. 
Young Madraya, you would be a great healer even if you were quirkless. Is Yuku's heart warms? Those words have been some of the most important words he's ever been told in his life. And he thinks about all the people he's healed so far, all the sacrifices he's made. He thinks about healing students after school, he thinks about healing Aizawa at USJ. About Kendu, Ingenium, All Might. He, thinks about saving Koda. And he asks himself, even though it was hard, even though it was scary, and sometimes painful, if he would do it all again. And the answer is yes. But it's more than that. It's familiar students that he doesn't quite know the names of calling out greetings as he passes them by in the hallway. It's Aizawa gently ruffling his curls and stealing him an onigiri because he, knows he'll be hungry. It's Kendu's parents arriving at his doorstep with her the day after he saved her life and hugging him tightly. It's the thank you note written in a clumsy five-year-old's writing sitting in Izuku's desk drawer. It's the new lightness in Ida's eyes that hasn't left ever since he healed his brother. It's the way All Might held him close, surrounded by loved ones who were, all smiling smiling because of Izuku and told him that he was his hero. Izuku feels his throat tighten. A small voice in the back of his mind whispers, but. I'm just a healer. Heroes protect people, heroes save people but he does too, doesn't he? Izuku opens his eyes and turns to look at Totoraki's scarless face. He had told him once before the thing he hated most about being a healer was, that he could only help people after they've been hurt, and yes, that will always frustrate him to some degree but that doesn't mean he should minimize the importance of being able to save an injured person. And he knows he saved Totoraki, in more ways than one. He can see it in the way his mesmerizing heterochromatic eyes gaze down at him with open warmth rather than the icy cold he felt when, they first met. Smiling, Izuku leans up and presses his lips high on his boyfriend's cheek where his scar once was. Totoraki turns to look at him in surprise, but he's already gone back down to rest his head on his chest, closing, smiling, as Yuku leans up and presses his lips high on his boyfriend's cheek where his scar once was. Totoraki turns to look at him in surprise, but he's already gone back down to rest his head on his chest, closing his eyes. As Yuku saved him. Just like he saved All Might, and Ingenium, and Kendu and all the others who he's chosen to sacrifice pieces of his life forced to, and just, like all the others he will, sacrifice himself for in the future. Maybe Mirio was on to something. His lips curl up into a smile, and he nestles further into Totoraki's warmth. Looks like he became a hero after all. The end.